guys. Just wanted to go over a couple scriptures today in 1 Peter chapter 4. I'm going to go ahead and read starting from verse 3 and through 6. So starting from verse 3, it says, For we have spent enough time in our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, so walking in the way of the Gentiles and the way of the world, um, instead of walking in the will of the Father. It says, When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. And that's all of us. It doesn't matter what we did. We could have all done all of them or one of them. It doesn't matter. We all walked in the ways of the world, and that's wicked, evil, abominations in the eyes of the Father. Um, it says when we did that, so we don't anymore. So it's, it's we used to do the will of the Gentiles, and now we do the will of the Father. Because verse 4 says in regards to these... They think that it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of disputation speaking evil of you. And you can see that in the world. They look at us as people who are weird, people who are on the outside. They think that we're um, crazy and um, we're nothing but Jesus freaks, but they can't see past. They can't see the reality. They can't see the truth because they've been blinded. Um, when you look out the only standard of basis we have for anything going on and anything right in the world, not just factual evidence, but what you see today is the Word of God. The only spiritual, well, that, the only spirit thing that you feel inside is the Word of God because the Kingdom of God is the truth. It's a power, not just of talk. Everything else is just of talk, but the Kingdom of God, the true living Word of God is a power and you feel it. But they look at us as people, so we don't run with them. And they speak evil of us. You see that today. You see that in Christ times. And you see that obviously days we're being persecuted. The Lord God said, blessed you are persecuted. And it will happen. For the Lord, for the world first hates him. And the reason it doesn't hate us, but it hates him. And that's why they're speaking evil of us. That's why they think it's strange that we're in the truth. Because they don't know the truth. They're living in the ways of the world. Ways custom to the Gentiles. Living in sin and abomination because they're blinded to the truth. They can't see the truth. Verse 5 says, They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. So all of us, them too, especially the Gentiles, I mean, there's the two judgments, the judgment seat of Christ and then the white throne judgment, the judgment for believers. So they will, we all have to stand before God and answer for every action, every word, everything that we've ever done. And Peter's saying here, it says, For them they will give account to him who judges the living and the dead, because he judges us who are living, but those who are dead, he judges the dead as well. So they're going to have to give an account. We have to give an account, but that's in front of the white throne judgment. That's for the believers. They're going to have to give an account, a separate account, um, that's not the white throne judgment, that is for to him who judges the living and the dead. Verse 6, it says, For this reason the gospel was preached also, also to those who are dead, which is all of us at one point. I mean, we see a lot of people that are dead now, but all of us were dead at one point. That they might be judged according to men in the flesh, because Christ was God in the flesh, and they were judged. We have a standard of basis of what He expects from us. He's already judged. I'm not talking about the judgment of the world. I'm talking about we have a standard of what he expects from us, what is right and wrong. And he says to judge righteously, so we have what he expects already. Um, but it says, The reason this gospel was preached to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh. So those who know God, do the will of God, God dwells inside of them, but, but Christ was God literally in the flesh, so they have been judged by men in the flesh, the disciples, um, the prophets, Christ, and then us even now who even just preach and speak the word and get to people. We have a, a basis of what God wants and what's right and wrong. So when you're you're judging them by flesh because it's righteous judgment, we're allowed to have righteous judgment. John chapter 7 verse 24 says, Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So it's, it's judging everything based off of Christ. And that means that if I judge somebody on if they steal something or they're lying and I say, oh, man, we need to repent. We got to give that to Christ because, you know, that sin, if we continue on with that sin, we're going to end up in the lake of fire. If you don't embrace that sin and give it to Christ and then I turn around and do the same thing, I'm not taking the plank out of my own eye. 
But if that's something that I used to do, I'm now free through Christ. I know how to get free because I know the truth and I'm letting them know, telling the truth. I'm not guilty of the same thing. The plank's not in my eye, so I'm judging righteously. Uh, it says, but live according to God in the Spirit. So this is also for us too because we were also living the ways of the Gentiles, living in the flesh, living the ways of the world. And when Christ came, God literally in the flesh... He had a, the standard of base of what's right and wrong, what he expects from us, how to get eternal life, how to get to the Father and know your true life, dying for the sins of the world, for salvation, to, to uh, for all who believe and call upon him, which is amazing, but that's for us to see. This isn't just for the Gentiles then, the Gentiles now nowadays, but this is for us too because we were once Gentiles. We were once that, and it says, but live... So we are judged by men in the flesh, letting in us know what's right from wrong, preaching the gospel. All of us had heard the gospel before we had got saved. We had heard the message of the good news, and then um, we understand who we are. We are judged, and we gave the Lord God our sins. And then it says, now, but we live according to God in the Spirit, and that's the gracious that news. That's the good news of being transformed, being reborn. Um, and now dying to yourself and dying to the ways of the Gentile and the ways of this wicked fallen world and now living according to God's will instead of your own will and that's the transition and that's for those who have given their life to Christ but see he's saying here that those who walk according to the world those who speak evil against those who live according to God for they look at us weird they're going to have to be judged by him who judges the living and the dead we were all, to, all there once at one point but because we have heard the gospel, the good news given into Christ, we can now live according to God in the spirit of, instead of in the flesh and the ways of the world that perishes and are wicked. You live according to God in the spirit, you know your true value, you know your true life, you know your true meaning and calling and live with him for eternity. A couple of scriptures I just wanted to bring up for just living in the spirit. How important this is because we don't follow the ways of the world anymore. We follow God in the spirit because we're living in the spirit. Our battle is of um, a spiritual battle. It's not a flesh and blood. Everything you see is just mortal and it passes away. But there's just there's so much more to see beyond this mortal life. And what you see is just temporary. You give into the Lord God and you'll get to see and be with him for eternity. Which our carnal minds can't even comprehend or understand um, a fragment of that but Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 and 17 it says but I say walk by the spirit and you will carry not the desires of the flesh so if we're constantly living in this in the giving into God walking in God and how he um, has shown us to walk and walking in his light we will not longer desire the things of the flesh because we now belong to him but it says, For the flesh sets its desires against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are the opposite, and to one another, so that it might not do things that you please. And this is another reference to where Christ said that you can't serve two masters. You'll either love one and hate the other, or love one and despise the other. You can't serve God in money. You can't love the world in Christ. You have to, the spirit goes against the flesh, and the flesh goes against the spirit. So you're either in the spirit, or you're in the flesh. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 it says for you were formerly darkness and this is going back to 1 Peter where it says we once walked in those ways we were once the Gentiles walking in the ways of the world for we were once darkness but you are now light in the Lord walk as children of light and that's walking in the will of God instead of walking in the will of the Gentiles will the way of the world um Galatians chapter 5 verse 16, I already said it, but it says just walk in the spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Because when we live in the spirit, the spirit is everything good. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 24 it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. And we know in 1 Corinthians that's the characteristics of love because everything that's good comes from God and if he dwells inside of you you live in the light of God you have the fruit of the spirit that's in you and that's the only goodness that we have that comes from him which is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control against such things are is no law now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires and that's amazing because we it's so so amazing I love that we we've crucified 
to those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh because Christ crucified was crucified for the sins of the world. So we're now crucifying the flesh, giving it to him, giving our sins and the desires of the flesh and giving it to him because he was the one who died for it. Galatians chapter 5 verse 25 it says for if we live by the spirit let us also walk by the spirit so it's just amazing you know the, the word of God is so powerful so amazing it's so important to get into it especially now in these times but you're no longer walking in the world see what I don't get is what it baffles me but the, the word of God it says it's going to happen you know it says that even in the last days when the Antichrist is actually walking and they realize that this isn't the Savior. They realize that this isn't who they were waiting for, the Jews. They're going to realize that. But what doesn't, what I don't get is you see people nowadays when you see what's been prophesied 2,000 years ago by Christ in his own words in the last days and even 300 years prior to that and then prophet Isaiah, you're literally seeing it happening. And people just don't want to wake up. They don't want to accept it. They don't want to see the truth. And that's what just keeps bringing me back to Matthew where he says many are called, but few are chosen. So they just don't want to seek the truth. They don't want to see it. But we no longer, and they look at us weird and they speak evil of us still. Even though you see what's going on in the world, how could you not wake up and see it? I mean, let alone if you seek the truth, you feel it in your heart. It's the only thing you feel. But how much more do you want to see? If you look up the physical, the factual evidence of everything that Moses did from the rock that he split from where the ark landed to the chariot wheels that landed in the Red Sea to Lot's wife that's still a pillar. I mean, we literally have everything. You go beyond that. You see what's happening today and what was prophesied by the Lord himself, what was spoken to in the book of Isaiah as well. And, and they still don't want to see it. They don't want to seek the truth and they still speak evil of us. But just know that that's, that's fuel for the fire. That's just more truth. Our time is only is short here. For the bride of Christ, we don't have much time left. And you no longer live according to the way. So you can see because you have eyes. Blessed are the eyes that see. You can see for you belong to God. You can see the kingdom. They don't have eyes to see. They don't seek the truth. They don't care about the truth. They love their sin. They love embracing it. And that's why the wrath of God is coming. And that's why it's just so important now because you walk in the spirit. You don't walk in that way. And your redemption is coming. Remember the Lord God said you look up in these times. You see it. Draw your head up because your redemption draws in. The bride of Christ is about to leave. The church is about to leave. You won't be here very much longer. And it's it's a sad thing. But it's, a, it's also an amazing thing too because you're no longer a part of this world who wants to embrace win sin and go against God. You're now walking in the will of God, accepting the truth and doing his truth for his glory so it's just amazing we have the spirit of truth living inside of us showing us how to live what he wants us to do how what he originally had planned for us instead of just going on the path of destruction it's amazing you have the spirit of god living inside of you just wanted to make a quick video i thought it was really amazing know that there's nothing that can stand up to that spirit of truth and we'll be with the father soon so god bless you guys